Hi, I'm Paul Thompson. I'm a motion control product specialist here at Warner Electric Supply and today I'm going to talk to you about the Kinetics 5500 servo drives and just how to go through and do the basic configuration and setup for those servo drives with a Logix controller. Today we've got a compact Logix processor, a couple of Kinetics 5500 servo drives, and some VPL single cable motors that we're going to be setting up and getting going in Studio 5000. In Studio 5000, all I've done so far is just make a blank project for my processor. There's a few things that I need to do to go through and set up and get everything ready to make these servos spin the motors. So the first thing I need to do is go into the controller properties. And in the controller properties under the date time tab, I need to check the box here for enable time synchronization. The SIP motion, the Ethernet servo drives, require that time synchronization so they timestamp the packets when they're sending them from the controller to the servo drives. So I just have to check that box and I can say OK. From there there's a few other things I need to do to get this to work. Uh, I need to add the drive into the tree. So down here under my Ethernet node I'm going to right click and select new module. So in this case the drive that I've got it's a 2198-H 003 ERS. So I'm going to select that out of the list. I'm going to pick create and that's going to launch this window. I need to give it a name. I'm just going to call it drive underscore one. And I need to make sure that the firmware revision is set correct. In this case, I know that it is set correctly, so I'm going to leave it as is. I also need to specify the IP address of it. And I can always look on the display of the drive or I can look in RS Links Classic and see that it's 192.168.1.24. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in that 24 for the last octet of the IP address. And I'm going to hit OK since the status is creating. So now I've created the drive. So I'm going to go back into the drive properties. There's a couple of other things in there that I need to change. On the power tab, I need to make sure that my voltage and AC input phasing is set appropriately. Uh, if you have 480 volt three phase that you're running to your drives, you'd leave these settings as they show for that part. In this case, I'm going to set mine to 200 to 240 volts AC, and I'm going to set the phasing to single phase. Also for the bus configuration, uh, in this instance, these are set up as standalone drives. If you had DC busing, you would set that up there. And I'm going to leave the shunt uh, regulator as internal. And I'm going to say apply, click OK. And now I've updated my power settings for that drive. So there's kind of two pieces when we're setting everything up in Studio 5000. We need to add the drive. We need to add the hardware to tell it what's in there. And we also need to have our motion axis. That motion axis is going to belong to what we call a motion group. So I, first off, I need to create that motion group. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click where I have motion groups in here, select new motion group. And I'll just call it motion group to keep it simple and hit create. Now I've got a folder here for motion group and I need to add my axis into that group so I'm going to go to new axis and given that this is an ethernet SIP drive I'm going to pick axis SIP drive and this one I'll just call axis one. Again you can name this to your application but I'm just going to keep it simple and hit create. So I've got the drive, I've got the axis, I need to go in and link the two of them now and, and change a couple of settings in the axis properties. So I'm just going to double click it to open that up. And here in the axis properties we'll see that it's assigned to the motion group. Uh, for module, right now it says none. If I click that drop down, now I can see where I've got my drive in there. So I'm going to go ahead and select that drive and hit apply. What that does is that links this axis in the motion group to the hardware drive that we set up under our Ethernet list. All right, there are a lot of settings in here. I'm not going to walk through all of them today. I'm going to walk through just the ones we need to go through to get this to work, uh, just so you guys can get everything up and running. So I'm going to go to the Motor tab, and right here for Data Source, where it says Nameplate Data Sheet, I'm going to switch that to Catalog Number. And we need to go ahead and enter in the catalog number of the motor. So in this case, I have a VPL-A0631. And it's a 631, I believe it's an M-P. So I'm going to select that motor. 
And that is also printed right on the nameplate on your motor as well. So when I enter in that catalog number, that gives Logix all the information about that motor. So all of the information about the voltage, the power, the current, everything that that motor can handle, it's all populated in there now by adding in that catalog number. Also, if I go to the motor feedback tab, by adding that in, it knows the cycle resolution of the encoder that's built into that motor as well. So I'm just gonna hit apply so that all those settings take effect. And then the next thing I'm gonna do once those settings are in place is I'm gonna go to my scaling tab. And if we had you know, some type of more complex load than just the disc that's attached to the motor, we could come in here and, and add in a transmission or if it were a linear actuator, we could add the scaling for the revs to inches or whatever our scaling factor would be uh, and then enter in the position units. In this case, my units are just revs because they just have a disc that I'm gonna be turning on the motor shaft there. So I'm going to say apply and say OK. And at this point, we're ready to download the project and get the motor shaft turning. So I've already pointed the project to the processor. If you hadn't done that yet, you could go to communications and who active, but I'm just going to go ahead and click download. And it'll probably take a few seconds to get the project into the processor. And I'm going to change it back to remote run. And my project is now in the processor and it's all set up. I'm gonna right click on my axis just to do what we call some motion direct commands. So all the commands you're gonna see me do in this window are actually instruction blocks that we can use in Logix. Now we're not gonna be going through those today in this video, we're just gonna be showing the motion direct commands just to give you guys an idea of how to get this up and running. First one I'm gonna execute is a motion servo on. Before I do that, I just wanna point out that right now this disc spins freely, there's no torque being applied. When I issue that motion servo on, now when I try to spin that wheel, you'll see that it fights back, there's torque being applied there and that shaft is gonna hold position. So we've enabled the servo loop, it's monitoring the position, it's holding position, and now from there we can go ahead and make it move if we want. So I'm gonna issue a motion axis jog or an MAJ. I just have to add a speed in there, and again this is in units per second or revs per second is what we scaled to. Uh, you can also adjust the X cell and D cell rates. I'm gonna leave those at the default for right now and just go ahead and execute this. And you'll notice that when I hit execute, now it should be spinning at about one rev per second. Uh, from there, I can go ahead and issue another instruction called a motion axis stop, which will stop motion. After doing the MAS, we still have torque on the motor and if I want to disable that, I would use a motion servo off instruction. Another good one in here that I'll mention too is the MAFR or motion axis fault reset. Anytime your axis faults out, you can use that instruction to clear the fault out of the axis. If you'd like more information, please feel free to contact myself, Paul Thompson, or your local Werner Electric sales representative.